प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन our dear Admos Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all the Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Niltgan Verni's life, as we now have learned throughout the weeks, is something out of the normal, extraordinary, we can say or describe. Through the kinds of virtues personality, character, divinity that Nilgan Verni is displaying at such an age, we learn, to de- we learn to determine that he is the Supreme Lord of Lords. As we continue on his journey, today we'll understand Bhagwan's compassion, Bhagwan's affection for his bhaktos and his, and their affection for Bhagwan. Swami Narayan Hare. The title of the story is At the Palace of King Mahadat. Nilkan Verni took the route to Pokhara. After walking for some time, he saw Tibet from a distance. It seemed as if he was in search of some sacred spot. After some time, Nilkan came to a beautiful town called Butol Nagar. He decided to stay on the bank of the river in a beautiful garden after seeking the permission of the owner. Bhavas were camping at the garden. Bhavas meaning false sadhus, sadhus who dress um, uh, according to a sadhu. They even wear the customs, even their hair is according to a sadhu, everything. It seems like this is a sadhu, but from the inside, from the perspective of their characteristic, their nature, from their inside views, principles, they have nothing to do with the sadhu. That's how much of bhavas there were at that time. And there was just their camping in the garden. As was his daily, Routine, King Mahadat and his sister Mayadani came to the garden in the morning. Meaning, King Mahadat was uh, the the king of Butolnagar, the city there, and him and his sister Mayadani used to take rounds in their garden every morning. This was their daily routine. They saluted the bhavas and touched their feet in reverence. Now, on one side, we can understand and determine and see that these bhavas, as per their description, hypocrisy was their main inclination. And due to that factor, showing one thing and doing another, these two, King Mahadat and his sister Mayarani, were the opposite. They, upon looking at the form of that this is a sadhu, this is a sadhu or a saint who lives uh, secluded without any kind of family, money, all the characteristics. Due to that, they had deep reverence for these bhavas. And they used to bow at their feet every day while crossing the garden. This was their daily routine. On one side... You have the bhavas who have false uh, hopes, false inclinations, bad virtues. On the other side, the king and his sister, 
have virtues in the form of seeing a sadhu and humbly bowing down. Now we have to think that imagine how this king and his sister are through character and through heart. They must have a pure heart. They must have faith and their innocence is definitely seen in this prasang right now. But as I described, these bhavas, what were they doing? They were looting the public. They were also taking advantage of kings by falsifying their whole identification. And through that, the kings would fund them with rations, supplies as needed. And the bhavas got to live in the garden of the king. They took advantages of king. They uh, robbed many people. They also, uh, you can say, falsified people's hopes by saying that we'll pray for, your, pray for you, your family's health, and everything will be okay. Just give us this much money. All these different kinds of bribes and different kinds of, uh, you can say, uh, uh, character was displayed in front of the public by these bhavas. And due to that, adharma or unrighteousness in India had spread like wildfire. Bhagwan Swaminarayan later on reveals the six reasons or purposes why he incarnated on this earth to Sadhguru Gopan Swami. Now, there are six purposes exactly that Maharaj has addressed, but out of them, one specific was to establish Ekantik Dharma, which is Dharma Bhakti Gnan Vairagya throughout the lands, and to abolish, destroy evil elements, adharma, unrighteousness, immoral acts, in short. This was one of his purposes of coming all the way from Akshardham to this earth. And through this act, through coming on this earth for only 49 years, Maharaj changed the whole lands of India. But you're probably thinking that, how so? Well, in the period of when he was Gansham, he stayed in the north and purified, killed Dal Kalidat, who, who was a, a demon. After that, at the point we're reading right now, in the stage when he's in Nilkanvarni, he traveled all the way up to Tibet and all the way around India and the east coast, southern tip, the western coast, Maharashtra, Pune, all these different cities, and finally landed and stopped in Gujarat. And there, traveling all the way around India, he slowly but surely, whoever he got into contact with, may it be a righteous person, may it be an unrighteous person, he started to purify their hearts and give them the understanding of Dharma Bhakti Gnan Vairagya and give them the true principles of how a satsang or how a devotee should be. After that, when he moved into the phase of Sajanan Swami, when he took the throne, this is when he really started to turn up his game, we can say. At that point, he initiated over 3,000 saints, built six temples, and traveled throughout Gujarat and mid-India, mid Madhya Pradesh, and he abolished Adharma there. His remaining life as Bhagwan Swami Narayan for the remaining probably 25 years, this was his main duty. And he established Ekantik Dharma. And through his saints, they also spread Bhagwan Swaminarayan's name. So for that purpose, for the 49 years, Bhagwan Swaminarayan came on this earth and destroyed Adharma, destroyed evil elements, and established Ekantik Dharma. As we're going to see now, what will happen and what will take place. 
They saluted the Bhavas and touched their feet in reverence. Then the royal brother and sister came to where Nilkant was staying. His spiritual glow and weak body, due to severe austerities, convinced them that they were in presence of an extraordinary soul. Now, upon seeing these other false bhavas, their bodies were very heavy. They didn't have a divine aura. Due to that factor, obviously, no one's going to get attracted. But since King Mahadat and his sister Mayarani were given these sanskars, were given such ethics at such a small age, they still bowed down to these bhavas or false sadhus. But when they came to Nukunvarni, they saw his divine aura. They saw his body, how weak it was due to austerities. And upon seeing both of these characteristics, they finally landed on his divine aura, which was hitting them. These waves of divine aura was, was hitting them, their soul. And due to that, they decided and they determined that this was an extraordinary soul. But they didn't know that it wasn't an extraordinary soul. It was the Supreme Lord Himself that had came all the way from Akshardham for their happiness here on earth. Tears came down their eyes when they saw the body of the young celibate. Think about how much affection they developed in such a short instant time. Something that is very rare. Something that has so much value. Affection for Bhagwan, affection for God, affection for Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Ekantik Sadpurush, who, who has and has imbibed the virtues of a sadhu and has Dharma Bhakti Gnana Vairagya, such a saint, to have such kind of affection for him is very, very rare, very, very valuable, and very expensive all at one time. All of you know that there is a diamond that was found in Africa, which is called the Kohinoor Diamond. India had possessed it for most of its time. And then finally, when the British came and ruled over India, it was taken back to Great Britain. And there, the Queen of England has worn it in her crown since that time. Determined by many, many dwellers, prominent dwellers, the price, the edge of it, the cut of it, the perfection of it, they decided that it's priceless. Something that cannot be given a price, something that you cannot buy on this earth, which is something that's very rare no one has probably everyone knows that you can how much ever money you have you can always buy anything you want on this earth but this diamond its weight its grams its cut all of its authentic points all of its traits are so valuable that there cannot be put a value on it even till this day right now in the same fashion, Bhagwan Swaminare and his Ikantik Satpurush, to have affection for them, to have a tender, fond feeling for them, to believe them to be our Atma's true relation, that is priceless like the Gohino diamond. Something that cannot have any, uh, we cannot put a value on it. Something which is out of the extraordinary. Something that we, if we have it in our hand and if we realize it, then we would never let go of it. This is how much of value it is to have or develop affection for Bhagwan and his Ikantik Sadpurush. And we can see from this prasang here that King Mahadat and his sister Maya, Mayarani had this kind of affection for Nukan Verni instantly. Not only that, 
but we can also determine and we can also per introspect in our heart. We can determine from this prasang that King Mahadat and Mayarani, they were godly souls. There's two kinds of souls everywhere and anywhere you go. May it be this earth, may it be another earth, may it be another galaxy, may it be another universe, anywhere you go. There's two kinds of souls. According to the Vachnamrut, Vartala 7th, godly and demonic. Godly souls have certain characteristics. Demonic souls have certain characteristics. They're completely the opposite. North Pole and South Pole. Oil and water. Black and white. It cannot mix. In the same fashion, godly souls are naturally attracted towards God and His saints. They have an inclination to do samagam, association. They have affection for God and His saints. Their heart is always tender upon talking, listening to the words of God and His saint. On the other hand, complete opposite, a demonic soul. A demonic soul is has no respect, has no value for God or his ekantik satpurush. A demonic soul feels like hurting others. They don't care if it's God standing in front of them. They don't care if it's a sadhu standing in front of them. A demonic soul is full of vices such as ego, lust, greed, anger, jealousy, so on and so forth, hypocrisy. But from this we can determine that Mahadat and Mayarani were completely godly souls because having the darshan of Nilkan Verni immediately, they, did, they thought of two things and they displayed one thing. The two things they thought of was that since this Nilkan Verni is very thin, he, does, he is performing severe austerities, he has a spiritual glow, and he is an extraordinary soul. And one thing they displayed was tears from their eyes upon having darshan of Nilkan Verni. This was their greatness, we can definitely say. Because without knowing who Nilkan Verni is, Nilkan Verni did not give any kind of identification. He was just sitting there in meditation, not even knowing who, who, what the name is of Nilkan Verni, not even knowing or understanding how great of a Bhagwan he is, nothing, no characteristics, and crying. That we can definitely say that that was from the past. Lives of King Mahadat and Mayarani, they must have done many penance, they must have attained a lot of mer merits, they must have had maybe some kind of relationship before that was covered and now it's uncovered due to that factor. Mayarani and Mahada cried upon having the darshan of Nilkan Verni. They prostrated at, Nilk at Nilkan Verni's feet and insisted that he stay at their bungalow in the garden. Now, again, this was one problem for Maharaj. In the world, we can see that there's celebrities that go everywhere, yet they can't avoid uh, people taking photos of them. They can't avoid people bugging, bugging them for their signatures. They can't avoid people trying to give a handshake to them. In the same way, Maharaj, everywhere he went, due to his attractive personality, due to his character and behavior and divine aura, everywhere Bhagwan went, he was always invited and plead to stay and give happiness to those who wanted it. He was always advised, but Bhagwan had a different nature. Bhagwan, as stated before many times in the Vachramrit, has said that I have an inclination of not staying anywhere in one place, even for one night. This was his 
his his uh, inclination, and this his is inclination. He said it in the Vachnamr later on when he became Bhagwan Swaminarayan in Dada Khachar's Darbargar, when he was giving his divine discourses. But we can know th that and prove it from his life from previous, as Nilkan Verni. Nilkan agreed, and he was given a special room, all for himself. The royal personage visited him every day, and the young Brahmachari would discourse to them on spiritual matters. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vachnamrit Gadara, last chapter 24, noble virtues can only be develop, developed by listening to the Kathavarta, the divine discourses of God and his saint. Nonetheless, in the Vachnamrut Karyani 12, one cannot be become free from desires, worldly desires, by performing vrat or like penance, austerities, as one can become free by listening to the divine discourses of God and his saints with faith and affection. If one can learn to develop an inclination of listening to Kathavarta, then automatically divine qualities would imbibe in that person. Nonetheless, one's innate desires to do worldly things, such as eat tasty food, do this, do that, buy this, buy that, all these kinds of worldly desires, all these dreams, these false dreams, would be eradicated only if one listens with faith and affection. This is Bhagwan's words, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's words. They would never go wrong if one tried. One has to just make an effort and try. At that time, those bhavas who were observing Nokan Verni every day doing Kathavarta to the king and his queen or his sister, and every day they became more jealous and jealous. Because they knew, they knew that they were false inside and they knew that he was true, no converni. They also became jealous because the king used to give them attention. But now, Nil converni got all the attention because Nil converni was giving a true message. A true message. One of his other reasons out of the six for incarnating on this earth was to establish his principles of Agna and Upasna, which he did. And through these spiritual course, discourses that were given to King Mahadat and Mayarani, Bhagwan Swaminarayan did exactly. He only had one mission, he only had one target, and that was all he was focused on constantly. Mahadat's daughter used to come to the garden to play with her companions. The bhavas would lustfully look at the princess and her companions. Nilkant, on the other hand, would lower his eyes when the princess came to play. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's nature, you have probably never heard of this, which I'm about to say. He has stated in the Vachanam, the Gadada middle chapter 33rd, that I have never harbored a thought regarding a woman or wealth in my life or I have never even had a dream of them. Harboring thoughts and having dreams. Harboring thoughts can be harnessed and kind of diverted and maintained and pretty much controlled after some practice. But dreams are not in our hands. Yet, Bhagwan Swami Narayan states that I have never had a dream, an improper dream of a woman or woman period or wealth ever in my life. This statement is something that is phenomenal. This statement alone can definitely determine even a person of the outside religion that this is Bhagwan himself. He is a true Lord of Lords himself. Yet, we find out that 
this is something that Bhagwan has said. But if we introspect something that is impossible for us ant-like souls to do, yet something, another un astonishing fact I want to share, that our Puja Guruji, one time in Katha, has also stated this for himself, this same statement he has stated for himself a couple years back in the Katha of Santo. Something that is phenomenal. Yes, God can definitely do it. But even his Ekantik Satpurush, who is one with Bhagwan, Santa Hune Hute Vardi Santare Ema Shri Mukhe Kahe Bhagavantare Santa Mana Jomari Murati Re Ema Pedanati Ekarati Re There's not a difference between me and my Santa. This, this oneness, this unity, this separation is not possible because me and my son are one. Many times an example is given that I remember that Santos give that if water, you have one cup of water and you have one cup of milk, in that water you put one spoon of salt, of sugar, and in the glass of milk, you put one spoon of sugar. Both of them are mixed. All the variables are the same. Everything is completely the same. Temperature, everything. After that, if you put the water on the gas and burn it out, at the end, you'll be able to find salt. Sorry, you, you'll be able to find the sugar. On the other hand, in milk, if you put sugar and, and, and heat it up to the max, it'll turn into cream and finally an Indian sweet called banda. But you'll never, see, you'll never be able to see the sugar. Bhagwan and his ikantik satpurush are like that milk and sugar. They have that special oneness that no one else in the world has due to that very factor Puja Guruji had stated this in Santos Katha for all of us to understand how high he is spiritually he didn't he didn't have any intention of notifying the world or anything but he wanted Santos to realize that the company you have received is not normal it's something beyond the comprehension of the human brain. The difference in behavior of the bhavas and the young brahmacharya, brahmachari was conveyed to the king by the princess and her companions. The king was thus impressed with more, with more reverence for Nilkand. The royal brother and sister implored Verni to come and stay with with them in their palace, but he refused. Obviously, Bhagwan states in his Vachnamrut, again, Gurdra, last chapter 13, that I have a nature to stay in forest, mountains, rivers, trees, but I have no inclination of staying in cities, mansions, palaces. This was his natural inclination. And here we can see that he displayed it by rejecting to stay in the palace or stay with them for a long period of time. He, however, out of their love for him, agreed to eat with them. The daily seva cleansed the hearts of the king and his sister. This is something that Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vajtamra that we can relate to, specifically Gadara Middle Chapter 25th, that impure desires can be destroyed by serving God and his son. If one develops an addiction just like Uka Kachar to serve and cannot live, Bhagwan has said, and cannot live 
even for a moment without the seva of God and His Son, then that person's impure desires will be destroyed. Here, King Mahadat and Mayarani daily served Bhagwan with great affection, faith, and due to that, Bhagwan, he did one thing for them, he destroyed their impure desires. Something that the soul has covered and has been covered with for a numerous time, time that cannot be fathomed. Because ever since there has been Bhagwan, there has been the soul. Not only one soul, infinite souls. Yet, if we now come back here and if we determine in our life right now that I'm still here, we don't even know how many bodies we have went through. May it be a body of an animal, creature, bird, organism, human, or something else. We don't even know the count. We cannot even determine after the count. We cannot even determine how many lives we have been traveling to. How many years has it been? It has been this much time, yet we have not reached Bhagwan, his divine abode. But due to the grace of Bhagwan, his Ekantik Satpurush, we have received satsang in this very life. So we are very fortunate. But here, all that desire, that, that desire that has been, that, that maya, that, that layer, which is very, very difficult to destroy, has been around this soul for that much time till today, till this time. Imagine how hard it must be. Imagine how it cannot be penetrated through even doing anything. Yet, one thing that Bhagwan Swaminarayan shows, one way that Bhagwan Swaminarayan shows that this layer can be destroyed is by serving God and His Son. That layer can be destroyed and after destruction, you and God would not have any distance. Even right now, we don't have a distance with God. He's in our soul, and He will always be in our soul. Just like how the body cannot live without the soul. Bhagwan, the, the soul cannot live without Bhagwan. It's, it's a proven fact, and it's in the Vachnamrut, and it's something that one has to experience to have that kind of a, a mindset or develop that kind of a mindset. But over here in this prasang, King Mahadat and Mayarani performed the services of Maharaj. And due to attaining the Rajipo, you know, another thing we can point out is service or seva. Over here, they served Bhagwan. Now, we cannot just take that physical format and apply it in our life and say that everything will be good and our impure desires will be destroyed. But their inside x-ray, inside of their hearts, inside of their intention, what kind of emotion, what kind of bow was there? That was the very seed. That was the very essence that Convinced no converni that due to this, I'm destroying their, uh, their, their, their impure body, or you can say impure desires, by just one look. That convinced no converni. Not the physical act of serving. That wasn't anything that Bhagwan looked at, or even till today his ekantik sadpurush look at. But the intention. The, the the selfless motive to serve that the emotion of uh, of the uh, or fond affection the faith inside instilled all these core values in one's heart if one learns to activate these and then serve even may it be a little then Bhagwan and his Ikandik Satpurush would be pleased immediately. This is a master key to please them. This is something that we can imbibe in our life. 
our so instead of physically, think mentally, and from there, perform seva. From that level, perform seva. That's how Uka Kachur did it. Uka Kachur, physically, yeah, we can see him sweeping the floor, sweeping the way from Gadara, the Dada Kachur's Darbar to the Gela. And we can see him washing some of those clothes and we can see him do many things. But inside of his heart, what's going on inside of his mind, what kind of thoughts he's having, what kind of emotions he's experiencing, only God and his son, Ikantik Sant, saw this. And due to that, Bhagwan had to give an example of Uka Khachar. Not due to his seva only, not due to his physical running around, but due to his intentions inside. Mayarani and King Mahadat also had this kind of inclination. Due to that, their impure desires were destroyed. Then Nilkin revealed his divine form to King Mahadat and Mayarani. As a result, both the king and his sister were pleased and elated and had no bound for their joy. Having realized that his mission had been accomplished, Nilkin made preparations to leave. Obviously, Bhagwan's intention was to get the duty done and move. He had no intention of sticking in one place and just finishing out his 49 years here on earth just for one in just in one area until he did decide until he was convinced when he stopped in Lodz Gujarat he took all of his supplies everything he had the very little supplies and he departed the king and his family were extremely distressed at this the king and queen prayed oh maharaj you stayed with us all these days and blessed us with the knowledge of your divinity and now suddenly, where are you going? Even my daughter and others have taken woes inspired by your presence. How can you leave without how can we live without you? We can see how much affection the whole family had for Nilkan Verni. We can see that due to this affection, their minds at that time, their hearts at that time were broken upon finding out that Nilkan Verney wanted to depart and move on to the next area he had destined for. Nilkan told him, O oh king, I have to go. Many people who want to attain salvation are waiting for me. Now, obviously, Bhagwan's whole purpose, sole purpose of coming on this earth was to perform the salvation moksha of Numerous souls. He could not stay in one area and do this and perform this act. But King Mahadat and his sister insisted upon Nilkan to stay. Look at how much affection, look at how much plea they're still, they're still uh, uh, showing to Nilkan Verni. So he put back his things and postponed his departure. Upon obviously much, much pressure, Nilkan Verni had to let go of his thought of leaving and stay a little bit there. So he put back his things and postponed his departure. You know, sometimes, even here on this earth, even in present time, when Puja Guruji is traveling around the United States or may it be India or any other country, those devotees who have such kind of affection, they also plead to Puja Guruji to stay, stay, stay. We can definitely see that the soul is not like a stone or the human body or the, the brain or the heart has emotion. How so? Puja Guruji, his level, his maima, his greatness, even the brain cannot comprehend. Yet, devotees due to Guruji's personality, due to Guruji's divine aura, they automatically feel in their heart wanting them to stay and stay and wanting him to give darshan, maybe not talk, maybe may not do anything, but to stay and due to that presence, one's heart would feel peace at peace. Yet, Guruji always 
has to depart his ways because he has many devotees. Why I'm stating this? Because one has to understand that Guruji is one and there are thousands of devotees. He has to reach everyone and give them the happiness of God, to give them also peace, to give them the happiness of Kathavarta. That's why he has come That's on this earth. Just as Maharaj comes with these intentions, Maharaj lives inside the Akantik Satpurush and sends him here and also has the same formula, same intentions, but we can say different body at this point. So he put back his things and postponed his departure. But in the dead of the night, he quietly slipped out of his palace. A goal is a goal. Maharaj had one mission, and his mission was to uh, perform the kalyan of innumerable souls. So he had to leave. That's why he had to sneak out. There is no other purpose. But the king's sister came to know of this the next morning. So look at the affection. This is what we want to look at and, and dissect and understand. So she sent a horseman in search of Nilkan in different directions. By then, Nilkan had covered, covered several kilometers. On catching up with Nilkan, the horseman lovingly pleaded with him and brought him back to the palace again. Nilkan Varni is brought. This, this um, throughout his seven years, only King Mahadat and Mayarani and the whole family, the whole kingdom, this was the only place where Maharaj himself was slightly, slightly showed attachment due to their affection for him, but had no attachment, obviously. But we can see a little bit here, and it'll come here now. Upon catching up, the horseman lovingly pleaded with him and brought him back to the palace. Eventually, through Nilkan's discourses, the royal bro brother and his sister were liberated from worldly desires. Thus, Nilkan achieved what he wanted to accomplish and then prepared to depart. Finally, after staying with King Mahadat for five months, the Brahmachari set out to fulfill his mission. Five months. Nilkan Verni has not stayed anywhere for five months except when he landed in Lodz. But this is the one area in But Butolnagar, in the kingdom of Ma uh, King Mahadat and Mayarani, where he stayed for five months and discoursed. Think about that. Think about how much affection, think about how much faith, think about how much of a relationship they must have developed due to that. Nilkan in his heart was completely had no uh, uh, had no attachment for anything. Yet, seeing their affection, Nilkan Verney also displayed and showed that same kind of behavior with them. When Maharaj's Ekantik Satpurush comes on this earth, also. They have no desire, according to the Vachanrut Gadara, 1st chapter 67, they have no desires except the desire of the form of God. They have no desires besides the bliss of God. They have no desires besides the abode or attaining the abode, divine abode of God. Yet, for the sole purpose of liberating souls, they come on this earth. And through the affection and emotion shown by the opposite devotee. Puja Guruji stays and pleases that devotee. Here right now, in this weather, just about a couple days, four or five days back, many devotees had notified that in the city of Chicago, it had become negative 24. And right now, Totally, overall, the United States, it's kind of like a cold front. Everything has become frozen, especially the north side. Just to please the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, just for their 
happiness, not for his. He he's happy even in India. He doesn't need to come here, just for the sole purpose of helping the soul understand the principles of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and instilling the proper and correct upasna of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and Agna as well. Guruji is traveling even right now in this cold and currently is in Florida, but he had traveled to Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and next week he'll be going to Chicago where hopefully it's not that cold, and then coming back here to New Jersey. And in March, his katha will be uh, occurring from March 2nd to March 9th, and he'll be departing soon after. But we can see that his stay was only for one month, one and a half month. But he decided to extend his invitation for the Utsu that is coming up, Sadhguru Smriti Motsu 3 and stay another month and a half, totaling of a three months, not in the summer season, but in the winter season. If we learn to develop and look in this fashion, then look at how much daya, look at how much compassion he has for us, for us devotees. From this, automatically, we'll develop affection for him. Because when the opposite, the, the opposite person learns about what, that person's intention is for oneself, automatically one can develop affection for that opposite person. It's something that's innate in the human, you can say, nature. So, upon that, Nukan Verni leaves uh, Butolnagar and he's moving on to his next place where he'll be in the Himalayan forest and he'll meet with Gopal Yogi. This is our lecture for today. From this, we'll be able to determine many different kinds of... Uh, we determined many different kinds of characteristics of Nilkan Verni. And we'll continue our lecture next week saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.